You won't get any more milk. I'm sorry. You're a big boy now. You're a big boy now. There has been huge progress over the last eight days because I can walk out here without them screaming. When we first started the first two days, if they heard you at all outside, they would be out and just screaming. So now it seems like everybody's happy. Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. Hi, Hi sweetie. So now I have a brand new least favorite thing. I had never really experienced flies to any sort of extent before, but this is the first summer that we have cows and so there are flies and I am trying my best to remedy that. Um, I made some natural, um, basically just essential oil fly spray and I don't know if it really does anything, but um, Gracie doesn't love it. But I'm trying to get at least something on her because the flies are horrendous. I know, baby. They're just so much. So this just has like rosemary and eucalyptus and um, cedar wood. And there was one other thing. Oh, tea tree oil. Ooh. So, yeah. It wouldn't bother me as much if they weren't just in her face so much. Huh, baby girl, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like the flies on you. So probably the biggest update that I have over the past week is that we started weaning the calves about eight days ago and we are drying Gracie off because her calf is due in about two months and you want milk cows to have about a two month break from producing milk. That way they increase their condition and they get a break basically before they have their new calf and then she will be in milk for about 10 months again and then have another two month break. So they go on a yearly cycle where they have a calf. Hopefully uh, she has a calf every September and we will probably have that calf um, uh, nurse until March. And then in which case we'll get at least one more steer or one more bull calf in March and then that calf will nurse until uh, the end of July and then wean. So we'll get at least two calves off of her each year um, along with the milk that we're getting for our family. So we just started this process. I have never done it before so uh, definitely it's been a learning curve and I have fallen back on a friend who has a milk cow and just doing research to making to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can for them because it can be stressful, especially for the calves uh, when they're being separated from their mom. So thankfully, Gracie is doing great and I am doing a fence line weaning for them, which means they're not completely separated from Gracie. They still share a fence line so they can still touch her and smell her. And then in the stalls, we put uh, pallets dividing them instead of just the uh, panel that we had before um, just so it's a little bit more secure but they can still stick their nose through a little bit and not nurse but at least touch her and smell each other so I feel like that hopefully has helped them through the process and they're just so cute a really great thing about this is that they have started to trust me a little bit more I am better with Charlie than I am with Jake because Charlie we got about three weeks after we got Gracie and Jake. I was pretty nervous about getting too close to him because I didn't know how protective Gracie was. I've heard that cows can be very protective of their calves and she was brand new to me so I didn't want to get between her and her calf. and start the bond with her in a bad way. So I gave her space. <laughs> He's looking me. I gave her space for a couple weeks and then by the time Charlie came around, I felt more comfortable with Racy and I was able to handle him a little bit more. So he's still a little bit skittish, but he'll let me or he'll smell me usually. 
and lick me and now I can give him some scratches on the head and I've been able to scratch him a little bit on the back and he's sweet and then Jake I can sometimes touch him especially if there's grain involved but not always so thankfully my relationship with them has improved a little bit and so far so good the process is going well so as you can see, they are eating hay. I have been feeding them hay because before this point, they have been rotating on the pasture with Gracie. But since I need to separate them, they don't have access to the same pasture as she does. So they are in the cow yard and I provide hay just to make sure that they're getting enough. And typically we let them out in this cow yard uh, I don't know the exact size. I think it's about 180 feet by 80 feet maybe. And so they have that. We just mowed because they ate it down pretty low but left a lot of the weeds. So we mowed it to make sure that the weeds didn't go to seed. So they are getting some grass. I am feeding them free choice calf starter grain. It looks like they are due, some, due for some more. I just gave them some this morning but I typically... Uh, come out here at least three times a day. I come out in the morning to milk Gracie and to let her out on pasture and I check on the boys to see how they're doing and then midday I check on them just to make sure that they're doing okay. They have enough hay because I don't want them to lose weight throughout this process which it doesn't look like they have. Like you could see Charlie has a nice big belly there and then I'll come out again at night to milk Gracie again. So these boys are pretty content right now. They're not upset at all, but that is not how they were the first two days. The first two days they were not screaming all of the time. Actually, the first half day, I would say, they didn't really notice because this is their normal stall and I was already calf sharing with them so I would separate them from Gracie at night and just in the same place. So nothing had really changed for them probably the first 12 hours and then midday they realized, oh my goodness, she's not letting me out. Why am I not out on pasture? And then they started mooing and um, I always laugh because it's not like a moo. It's like the mooing scream. It sounds like um, any movie that they have a cattle drive when they're just like scream mooing, that's how it was. And they did go to sleep at night. They didn't moo all night. Once it got dark, they went to bed um, because again, that was normal for them uh, to be sleeping in here separated from Gracie. But then in the morning, once they saw me, are you trying to eat me? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Let's see, hi sweetheart. Oh, I'm sorry about the flies. So I'd say that went really well because we separated them in the same spot that they're normally in at night. That meant that they weren't crying overnight. But again, once they saw me in the morning and especially saw that Gracie was out on pasture, that's when they were really upset and they were yelling. And so that went on um, on the afternoon of day one and then all throughout the day, probably from like 10 a.m. to um, like 9 p.m. on day two and then day three it was like cut in half they didn't make much noise at all and then on day four they were pretty quiet so um, I had heard that it just takes a couple of days and I'm glad that it really did only take a couple of days before they calmed down and got more used to the idea so weaning the calves is only half of this process the other half is drying off Gracie and that I know, or I knew was a process. You can't just uh, dry her off overnight because she will continue to produce milk. And if she gets too full and engorged, then she could very easily get mastitis and an infection in her udder. And that is really serious. Um, and so I definitely wanted to avoid that. She has started snuggling with me. Oh my gosh, I hope, I hope we can see this. She's so sweet. She'll wrap her neck around me and I'll scratch her head. It makes me so happy. She started doing that two nights ago. I was just scratching her and then she wraps her neck around me as I scratch her. I love her. She's so sweet. So anyway, I knew that it would take 
Um, I was thinking maybe like a week or two to dry her off, um, going from having the calves on her um, for, let's see, probably like 16 hours of the day and then um, being separated for eight, but then I milked her in the morning um, to only getting milked three times a day. Um, and so for the first three days, I did milk her three times a day, which was a big adjustment for me because I had been my baby. She's so sweet. I love you. I love you, huh? You're such a good girl. I had been only milking like a couple times a week because um, I was just busy and whenever I needed milk for the fridge, I would milk and then when I was too busy, I would just keep the calves on her overnight and um, or I would say that I was going to milk and then I ended up not milking and then I would just let the calves on her. Um, so anyway, that was a huge adjustment going from a couple times a week to doing it three times a day. And so I did that for the first three days and then I cut back to just two times a day and I could see a difference in how full she got. She was getting pretty full, but I checked her probably like five or six times a day just to make sure that she wasn't getting hard um, or there weren't any signs of mastitis. And thank goodness she did great. Um, so far, she hasn't gotten engorged. There hasn't been any signs of mastitis. And uh, I'm milking twice a day now. So it's been like that for about five days. And I think what I want to do is uh, start increasing the time in between my two milkings. So in the morning, I'll start milking her later and later. So maybe for the next three days, instead of milking her at maybe, I usually do it about nine o'clock, maybe I'll push it till 11 o'clock. And then at night, I milk her at, you know, 9.30 or 10 o'clock. And then the maybe three days after that, I'll push it out to one o'clock in the afternoon and then milk her again um, before bedtime. So then once it gets close enough together, I'll just drop the morning milking and then um, I'll just do the night milking and then eventually I'll just stop milking her altogether. So I hope about maybe a week and a half to two weeks more. Like I said, I had thought originally that it would take about a week to two weeks and then I heard no it's more like a month that it takes so I do want to make sure that I'm giving her a break because she has always had really good condition um, dairy cows you're supposed to be able to see um, her bones it's not like a beef cow where they have a ton of meat on them um, all of their energy goes to their milk production so these bones here, what I've been able to tell, I can see a little bit more definition in these bones. This is still nice and round. It's not pointy. And then in the back here, um, these bones still have quite a lot of meat on them. They're not like just super sharp edges right here. But again, probably like this rib I can see more and then a little bit more definition in these bones and so that's not what I want I want to make sure that she stays nice and fat and happy and so I'll be happy to give her a little bit of a break so she can put on some weight before the new baby comes speaking of babies I am just so so excited for her to have her baby um, she's due on September 22nd, and I just hope it's a girl. <laughs> I'd say even more so than like when I had my kids, you know, you, you dream of what you want and you guess about what is going to happen. I think about it so often, what she'll have. And if it's a girl, then we'll keep her um, as part of the normal herd. And we have been rotating Gracie and the calves around. Um, but thankfully, we have more pasture than we have cows <laughs> that can eat the eat the grass. So um, we can get a few more. Uh, uh, we can keep on a few more cows. And what I'm thinking is that um, I would like to have a backup dairy cow no matter what. So if we have her daughter, then we'll keep her definitely, and then her next next calf. If it's a girl as well, 
which we might end up just using sexed um, semen because we'll get her um, AI'd. Um, that way we at least have a very good guess that it'll be a girl. Um, you don't always get it 100% of the time, but there's a good chance that you'll get the sex that you choose. So we'll have our backup dairy cow, but also we can raise heifers to potentially be family milk cows that we can sell. And so I, so far, love this breed. I love Gracie so much. And so um, that might be a way that, you know, we can make a little bit extra money on the farm is raising her calves and then selling them once they um, are bred and maybe halt or train them so that somebody else can have a family milk cow. She's kind of been a lazy bum today. She's just been staying in in her stall. She usually does, it's pretty funny. She goes out in the early morning and grazes and then goes back in for a siesta for a couple hours in the hottest part of the day. And then in the evening, she comes back out and starts to graze again. Let's see if I can get her. Come on, Gracie. <whistles> Come on, Gracie. Come on, Gracie. I love how jerseys talk. I talk to her and she goes, moo. So her udder now is much bigger than I ever saw it before. You can see it off. If you're standing to the side of her, you can see it. <laughs> Watch, let me get to the side. You can see it poke out the back. Ha, huh, you're very full. Well, not very full. I'm probably going to milk her later tonight. Um, but yeah, I'm getting about a gallon to a gallon and a half in each milking. So that's a good amount. I'd say at her peak, she's probably getting about four gallons per day because when I was milking her with the two calves on her, she was giving me about a gallon and I was I assumed that the calves were getting about three gallons. So um, hopefully I'll be getting less and less now as she produces less milk while I'm drying her off. And uh, then if, I'm, if she's only going to have one calf starting in September until we get a calf or calves in March, I wonder what her production will be like if I'll be getting two gallons and the calf will be getting uh, two gallons or if that baby will get a gallon and a half and I'll get two and a half gallons, we'll just see. I definitely don't have use for two and a half gallons. So I assume if I just take less and the baby drinks less, then her body will acclimate over time. But it's just interesting and I'm ex so excited uh, to start this process with her and to see her new calf and uh, have her in milk again. It'll be hard for the two months where I don't have Gracie's milk and the kids, you know, they, they know when it's grocery store milk versus Gracie milk. and. It's funny because if we don't get Gracie's milk, then we get a uh, local brand here. There's dairies um, in our town and uh, it's really tasty milk. If you need to buy anything from the store, I definitely uh, prefer buying that. And it has a picture of a Jersey that looks just like Gracie. So whenever I'm pouring milk at dinner, uh, the kids will say, is this Gracie milk? And I say, no, it's Gracie's friend's milk <laughs> because um, it's milk from the dairy where she came from, or at least part of it is. So it's kind of nice that even when uh, she's dry, I'll be able to have uh, good quality milk from a uh, dairy nearby. It's just, it's nicer when it's raw and it's right from her and it's a nice relationship that we have. All right, I got her interested. Ooh, she's coming. Hey baby, she's so sweet. Is that those flies? Oh my goodness. If anybody has experience with the best fly spray that they like, let me know because I, I can't handle this. I feel too bad. Hi Gracie. Hey baby. All right, well that's it for this video. I just wanted to give an update on what we're doing. The biggest thing is just weaning these calves and working on getting Gracie dried off. Thank you so much for watching Little Lady Homestead and I'll see you in my next video.